went with Nautilus into it instead and we're able to actually ended up beating it. Now he did have some very powerful ultimates and it has been almost perma banned against him in the CB low season, but instead they're gonna lock in oh. the Nidalee and it gets answered in kind with Shen and Hecarim. You already know what this comp wants to do, Pastry. They wanna die. Cal's ready. He's, uh, you know, first, first game of Worlds for 2020 on the Hecarim. Uh, played an absolute cracker of a Hecarim game in uh, game two of their finals. Uh, did quite a lot of ganking, actually, towards the top side. So maybe Armwood's going to get a bit more attention than he otherwise would playing these tanks, but clearly knowing their style here, as you mentioned. But Chromes' reaction was for the almost insta-lock of Renekton and Silas. Yeah, they were so prepared. So already the renekton Nidalee combo being very strong. We've seen what it can do in many iterations of AP junglers. But against the Shen, Shen can do fairly well into the Renekton. The Spirit's Refuge can stop the stun, so it actually can be outplayed by the Shen. So there is a good chance that this emphasis of top lane from INTZ doesn't actually pay off. And with the Shen, with the Hecarim and the Senna, the diving power that you have is really insane. We just don't know what INTZ is going to pick if they actually are going to have targets that want to be dove or that are easy to dive because locking in this Silas into the mid lane already guarantees that you have the matchups that you want as you can now ban away the mid laners and give yourself another Shen ultimate. Yeah, Senna also picked here for Zeitnot. Kind of interesting to see where he goes next as far as ADs go with Caitlyn Ban. But you know what? He's like, Caitlyn's banned. Let me take another AD that can get to uh, that range and even more. So clearly lacking his long range ADs. Very proficient as far as positioning and just laning and playing League of Legends. Honestly, is Zeitnot very good player. Uh, Ezreal Ashlo going to be banned away. So Macau eating some bans. And Balulu on the other side is going to lose both his Azir, which showed up a lot in their finals. But Velkos, another champion, he's also capable of piloting, which is something that is pretty rare among mid laners at this tournament. It is. You can tell the GBM spice trickling <laughs> down to super massive. And oh, goodness, that's a Lulu. OK, so yeah, that's just going to enhance the Hecarim even more. Everybody trying to dive there. And so Hecarim normally does really well into the Ash, which is why it's a little surprising to see the Ash ban, but it's going to now force a Jin pick out of INTC. We've seen teams try to go for things like a Tristana if they're worried that there's going to be too much threat into the backline. But with the Lulu being locked in, I think they can just try to outplay the dive happening because it's only going to be the Hecarim. And now you can round out your... Energies that might be overlooked, like the Jin and Nidalee together, being able to combo into a root, into a spear from a long distance, can just catch out opponents from afar. And that's something that Supermassive have to really keep in mind when you're dealing with these champions like a Lulu that are not very safe, that can eventually be picked quite easily. Well, a Jin that can roam into the mid lane can be just as deadly as an Ash firing an arrow. Certainly a little play here as uh, players are just getting their settings organized. Then we'll be on with the game shortly. That shouldn't be too much longer before we're able to play this one out. 
It's such a cool stage. Oh god, it's amazing. I mean, this isn't even the dance the dance moves, right? We usually wait for the virtual or the augmented reality for the the musicians to show up. This is just we're just playing. There. What do you mean that city's really there, Crumbs? Are you telling me anyway? It doesn't <laughs> Don't shatter my illusion, Crumbs. Let's watch some League of Legends instead. Super massive. We're gonna try and put a win on the board. INTZ certainly wanting to do the same in Dire Straits already. O N two super massive. Get to start off fresh faced here on day two. As we have a quick check in with the runes, not too surprising I'd say. Another conquer in Italy here, so something that's clearly more common than perhaps I was aware of. Face rush for Kakao, always a great one. And that first ward will be taken out by Tay, who collects the first CS of the game. Top lane is done. Ah, so nice. And it actually will matter quite a bit, because now the Renekton is going to be able to hit level 2 sooner than the Shen. He was already going to be getting priority in that lane, but now it gets even tougher, which does present the opportunity for Nidalee to pass to the top side and really chunk down and potentially dive out the Shen. So... Let's see what the junglers choose to do with these pathing Renekton. Or sorry, the Hecarim is the champion that can go for an entire red side clear into a recall and try to maximize the value of the blue buff later. But we'll see what they think about when it comes to affecting these lanes. There's a lot of potential ganks that can happen into the bottom. And you have a Leona that wants to be going in and two to three forms of crowd control from the bottom lane available on super massive so cacao pathing to the bottom side i think smells that there could be blood in the water in the bottom lane yep buff to buff it looks like for cacao takes that reg with a leaf from amut as well who also got to lane late so it was already going to give tate pressure on the wave but amut you know he's uh he's happy man he'll play weak side he'll pick tanks he'll leash for cacao it's the kind of play you love to have on your team you know very reliable when you want a, a player that plays weak side, you want somebody that's going to do it with a smile. The last right, right. thing you want is a top laner playing weak side that's really upset about it, that normally wants to play carries. And that tends to be the difference between teams picking carries or not. If how happy is your top laner doing that? All right, well, Kakao is uh, indeed did go buff to buff. He's going to go Grump and now Wolves by the looks of things. So it's going to be a lot of farming for both these junglers, which I think we could have predicted fairly safely. Shuni, though, flying through the jungle, as is expected from Nidalee, and does get that ward down as well, so a bit of value from that early sweeper already. He's getting two wards, and it's a big thing to look at the mechanics that a lot of the players have when it comes to clearing out the jungle, especially on picks like the Nidalee, being able to not only kite away effectively, but stay at a healthy level of health in order to then gank or affect the crab. So seeing Nidalee be this effective at clearing out vision while doing jungle camp is a really good sign. And here's the ghost, there's the stunner. I'm what's gonna be in trouble. Kakao, I've seen this so many times. And that's first blood over to the Shen. Oh, that is a great gank to have. Now that the Shen can start to get some items into this matchup, it gets really tough for the Renekton to punish this lane. And what used to be the place where the Nidalee and Renekton want to go for you now start to have second doubts about that. You might not think that you even have kill pressure anymore if Renekton can bully out, if the Shen can bully out the Renekton and have control of the wave. It's just so wild to me. Like, I've, I've actually seen that gank before in game two of the final Supermassive played. I think it was even the same two champions in the top and jungles. Balulu's in a bit of trouble, but nothing Lulu can't handle. She, she wins his OA towards her tower. Healing just fine here. 1v1 one versus Envy, although is running a little bit low on mana. And Kakao is going to go ahead and finish off the rest of the Krugs as Shinny is trying to at least try out farm the Hecarim after that gank. But Kakao, he's doing just fine on that front as well. As Shinny is going to get stunned. Oh, getting the fear after the stun. That's a dive incoming. There's the flash. There's the auto. And Shinny is going to pick up a Lulu. What a spear there, knowing that the Lulu was going to walk a little bit further up after the chains connected. And that's a huge deal because now the Silas still has flash. So there is an opportunity to repeat this one, not immediately, but later on. And now we really get to see what this Lulu is thinking about with those fairy charms. I think it's safe to say this is going to be the full utility, utility Lulu. And I'm starting to have doubts if Supermassive have enough Ooh, damage. Red, I love the play, just barely missing the Zenith Blade. But that room from bottom lane, Balulu was... He was about to get killed again. <laughs> but uh, Redbird, unfortunately, just off with the skill shot there, but Envy's gonna go ahead and reset. 
And TP back to the lane most likely, so not going to lose anything at all here as Lulu's already TP back to mid. The play doesn't work, but the idea is still right. I want to see INTZ continue to punish the flashless Lulu. She is so vulnerable here. It's something that the better teams on day one were doing, which was just knowing who doesn't have flash and ganking repeatedly. Because the thing is, you don't actually know how many times these players can die having not no flashes. You haven't played against each other, so you don't know that, hey, after one kill, they're going to be playing safe. You don't know if that limit is three kills, it's five kills, so you want to try to maximize how much bang for your buck you're getting out of these burned summoners. Cow also just hanging out in this brush, waiting for the scuttle crab, but perhaps someone else will walk by and he can spin on them. Kakao actually going to wrap mid here. Oh, I think just spotted barely. Yeah, Envy did see it. Kakao, though, he's going to keep heading in. So I was like, surely they're not there, but certainly is. Dash is out. Safety Snowflower here as well. Getting very active here on the Nautilus. Nice and early. Good juke back there from Kakao to not get speared by Shinny. And the control ward that did indeed spot Kakao will now be discovered and taken out appropriately. So Silas is level 6 and is waiting to steal an ultimate here. Not willing to commit to anything just yet. Had three pretty cool ones in front of him, but we'll just wait for those until the fight presents itself. And knowing that they're going to get a dragon, they're going to be fine. And there's also a Shen that is going to be available with an ultimate now. So... Just playing the objective game is going to be a fine look here for INTZ, knowing that you have the champions that you are comfortable with, and I'm pretty sure you're actually going to end up out damaging Supermassive pretty heavily if they don't get ahead on this comp. Nice Drake take. This Kakao is farming up to level 6 now for both junglers, but Kakao with the Shane might be looking to pick a fight again if you can find someone willing. And be continuing to shove mid here as well. Baluda actually keeping up nicely in CS despite getting himself killed. But Envy not too far behind. A yeah. little over a wave, about a wave and a half as Baluda is going to pick these up. Yeah, the danger with the Lulu is what happens in the team fighting phase? How do you look at that stage? Are you able to skirmish? Are you able to assist your team when it comes to vision by yourself? Because usually this is not a champion that is a threat by any right just when she's walking around on her own, whereas someone like Envy can just walk into the jungle and be a huge menace, can get solo kills, can pressure so much. Lulu needs to have her hand held the whole time by Hecarim, so it's going to be a matter of playing that 2v2 quite well out of Supermassive, using the Shen ultimate to outnumber, and Shen is just now happy in this lane. He's not going to get dove anytime soon, so the options that INTC have going on for them revolve around mid to bottom, which plays into the hands of hopefully seeing the Hecarim and Lulu together. Yeah, with that Shen as well, like you mentioned, as Kakao, he actually took that second blue, so this game is a very Kakao-centric draft, actually, now that I think about it. He's kind of got one and a half supports, I guess, Snowplow, sorry, two and a half supports with the Lulu and the Senna, able to help out, and the Shen, riding in on top of the Hecarim, making sure the Shen can get to the back lines, and the Hecarim stays safe, he charges forward. Going to be Trinity Force, nice and quick here for Kakao, this is the Hecarim thing. We'll see how much more aggressive he wants to get with his build. In that game I alluded to in their finals, he did get very aggressive with the build, but uh, does at least want to finish this very expensive purchase before that. And did start the Rift Herald, but with bottom lane missing, didn't feel too safe about trying to complete it, especially because Armwood's getting pressured here in top lane as well. So not a whole lot of space with his bot lane resetting to contest this objective, and Shinny is going to clear out the ward knowing that and start the Rift Herald instead. Yeah, so Kakao didn't know where Leona or Jin were. All he knew was that his own bottom lane had base and that the enemy bottom lane was not in the lane as well. At eight minutes in, it's safe to assume that this swap is happening. And Hecarim is going in for a fight with Shen ultimate. We'll get stunned though, but Shinny is going to eat quite a bit of damage. He's going to flash over the wall, but there's a center ulti Ooh. over the top, and Armut's going to ride in and take down the jungle. Now Kakao looking to chase down Redbird as the next softened up target, and that's going to be an easy kill there as the double kill goes over to the Shen. Renekton just gets killed surgically by the Doctor in the top lane, and Kakao finishes off a third as Supermassive 
Really punish INTZ for that Rift Herald. It looked like INTZ thought they were going to get the Rift Herald for free and got to completely disengage. They did not expect that Hecarim was going to come in from the top side of the map, and they lose so much for that one because now they get to use that Rift Herald. But where? Where are they going to find value for that one? The re-engage happens from Envy. A little assault here, but there's a Riptide away from Snowflower, and Belulu's here just... No, he was just hanging around. Thought he TP'd in, but was mistaken. Kikau is going to run out of there. Supermassive going to disengage from INTZ's attempt at pick. So just a very well played combo. And already, Crumbs, we can see how deadly the Hecarim Chen is. And Kikau waited so long for this play. So they see the Hecarim there, but what happened in the bot side here? Because this is what really caught them off guard. The fact that this engage was so sick too. Really curious about how that one ended up working out there because I felt like the Hecarim did not end up going through, but Shen followed through all the way. Regardless, there is a giant horse on your screen and he is very scary. Yep, Lulu ulti there from Balulu. Things just so tricky. And that Trinity Force will be done awfully quick. Keep an eye out on Kakao on the minimap and just wait till he hits B. Because he, imagine if he's hitting it, Trinity Force is done. And that is real bad news for INTZ. A super massive up almost 2,000 gold. Hey, he's hitting Recall. I reckon he's got Trinity Force completed, Crumbs. I think he certainly does. And now they're thinking about diving there. Oh, the E missed, but it doesn't matter. They can still go for yeah, him. Tried to read the Duke. Here's the TP though. Oh, what with the taunt though? He's trying to live. He's in a literal 1v5. And he gets a what? kill. He's going to get another kill. He's an absolute madman with the Titanic Hydra. He's going to make it look all so easy as Balulu sweeps in at the last second and didn't even need to ulti to keep the Shen alive. Oh, it's disaster pastry. They thought they had an opportunity since they saw multiple members in the bottom. You knew you could outplay him, but he's so strong right now. And with the initial CC being missed, and it felt like people weren't really too sure that the dive was happening. You could see that they were second guessing themselves as not everybody was as close to the Shen as you would have liked them to be to follow up on the CC right away and it's just going to go from bad to worse. Losing to the top lane, Shen, who now has a 500 gold spree, a dragon for free. Let's take a look at how this play unfolded once again. So Leona goes in, but look, Renekton's not even here yet, right? Five people That's go five in. That's five champions! Wait, what do we do? Do we go in? Do we not? The taunt gets to Leona. He's so tanky there and still has the flash available with the Lulu showing up. You best believe you're running out of there because she still has ultimate. Lulu just TP'd in and hit E. That was the easiest assist of his life, as he does indeed have the Athenes in the Holy Grail. So it is full util right now for Balulu. That's super massive. Such a ridiculous lead already. I was excited to talk about Kakao's Hecarim getting going again, but Amut is the big man on campus here in top lane with the Titanic Hydra Shen. This is why Shen is just so strong. Unlike champions like Scion or Orn that tend to be the other tanks that you think of in the top lane, he does have a ton of damage and is able to consistently dish it out. The Shen Titanic Hydra build is just a complete bruiser and he just doesn't look like it. He doesn't play the same way, but once he connects that taunt, presses that Q, hits you three times and the Hydra is on top of it, that's percentage HP with a ton of damage behind it. Yeah, and you don't always get to do this, right? Shen, you always want to do this. But sometimes, you know, the game doesn't afford you that luxury, but with five kills and a single assist for 100% KP there for Armut, he's absolutely able to go for this more aggressive build. Stuns chain in the mid lane, Balulu gonna wild growth himself, flashes out of there. Blast bullet ready to go. Does connect, but Balulu tanky enough with the shields and his own ulti. Very good itemization there from the Lulu, especially into the double AP mid jungle combo. You just don't have the damage to burst him down and your Jin is not very strong and neither is the Renekton. So ganking this Lulu now has become impossible if you're not bringing in the Renekton and Jin together. So you just get a guarantee hyper Hecarim and he's quite fed and the great thing about him not having so much gold yet still having the items that he needs is that you now have more threats on your team in the Shen and that was what we were worried about were they going to have enough damage that ship has sailed this Shen is so fed you're always going to have damage uh, did you see a little replay there in the picture in picture ah oh, looks like that was cancelled there not able to get himself out 
but does eventually go back to base, get himself the Barmy Cinder to join that Titanic Hydra. If he wasn't pushing fast enough already. Okay, so we got two minutes until the dragon spawns, but it's gonna be a cloud soul. It's pretty good, I think, for Super Massive here to prioritize this objective, not only with the Shen, Hecarim, but the Lulu as well. Having more stacks of those ultimates or lower cooldown is going to be really powerful for them. So I think they should most certainly prioritize this objective, despite it not being one of the more combat-oriented ultimates. This composition, ult-reliant, will really love to have it. I mean, look, uh, Hecarim's passive gives him uh, more damage for moving faster, so it is a combat... <laughs> Oh, soul for Kakao, I think at least. As they're going to take down the Scuttle Crab here and look to maybe play for the second Rift Tower. Dragon up in a minute 30, though, like you mentioned. Perhaps Supermassive want to walk down there instead, but I think they've got time to do both. Now, Shen does not have ultimate, and him being in the face of Renekton doesn't let him TP right away, so it would still be a four on four just yet. We'll see how the top laners play it out because they can choose to either leave it as a 4v4 and just try to fight each other and keep each other in vision. Or you see what sometimes happens where both top laners just run away from each other and make sure that they can TP into the fight. You already saw how this matchup plays out. That was a really sick use of the Spirit's Refuge to dodge out of Renekton's stun. Yeah, it's definitely a matchup that's got a lot more intricacies than uh, it may appear at first glance. And I'm um, certainly getting the better of that little interaction there. He's gonna go back once more. This is the Ruby Crystal, not quite flying up to his next items just yet. But it looks like Dragon is going to be the player. Is Kakao looking to flank Envy in the mid lane? He's still alive though, so Kakao has not started the dive. But there's an Nautilus ulti, Kakao poking around, but sees two, decides maybe that the dive isn't worth it. Zeitnot able to poke down the tower. That's mid prior for Super Massive as they are looking to take this next Dragon. Macau though, actually grabbing first tower, interestingly. All alone there in the top lane, but that means they're absolutely not contesting for this dragon. Yeah, that was surprising to see that. And seeing that the Jin was top was the cue that gave Supermassive the idea to go for the dive. Because you assume, well, Leona could probably also be in the top side. Is there an option to go for this dive? But they thought otherwise because it was 15 seconds until the dragon came up. If you miss that one, you also lose the dragon when you already have secured vision with both mid and bot lane shoving. Best to play it safe and look for a fight that you know goes right and you won't lose out on the objective that you're coveting. Just the second Drake super massive, third overall, so not too bad to give away. Things also don't always want to fight for the Cloud Soul. Is considered to be one of the weaker ones, although like I said, I think certainly very good at least on the Hecarim. And uh, no one's going to turn away a Dragon Soul. Uh, always good to have one because there is indeed only one per game. Bottom out of tower looking a little bit unhealthy on the INTZ side, but Balulu not going to press his luck as Tay is going to go ahead and catch this wave. And Super Massive not, not pushing too quickly here, Crumb. Rift Tower going to be started here by Shinny. We'll see if INTZ can nab this one. Yeah, they're, they're taking their time here. They have a Senna, which is going to be fine later into the game. And they just want to make sure that the fights they take are the ones that they're going to win. They're playing it just calm and collected. And they have to remember that all their gold is in the Shen as well. So if they actually take a four on four in another part of the map and the Shen's not able to pour in, it's not that big of an advantage as what they would initially have thought. So they want to make sure that Armut is in that position to be able to help out before they take these fights. And if he's not, well, as long as they're taking the objectives, the pace of the game is just fine. Yep, super massive up, but you know, not by a huge amount of gold, 2,500 or so. Although Balulu is going to extend that advantage, he does complete the kill of the outer tower here in bot lane. So super massive finally going to tie up the turret score as well. It's just uh, you know, it's time to chill out. Perhaps we'll wait between dragons here, 320 until that cloud dragon is up. But super massive don't need to do too much more right now. But I think INTZ happy to. Keep things a little bit slower here as the Assault in mid lane is maybe where things will start to unravel a bit. Zeitnod and Snowflower have been very persistent in trying to knock down this tower. It's been really tough for INTZ to find a way to make a play on the map because we already saw the atomization from the Lulu being a really new big nuisance against the 
Silas in Nidalee, but the Renekton now having to match Lulu is just not going to cut it, and he doesn't even have boots. You're not going to be able to chase anybody down. He didn't go for the Blade of the Ruined King first, so you don't even have the sustain or the chase potential in the lane, so there's not that much that INTC could go for at this stage in the game. So they're looking to just get Envy in a position where he's very fed, where he can start stealing those ultimates. Ideally, level 16, if that's even possible before the gold lead grows too large, but that's gonna let the Silas really rip it with having so much access to ultimates and just turn team fights into complete chaos because that's what they need right now. They need Envy to have something like a Lulu ultimate, a Hecarim ult, or even the Nautilus to influence these fights in an even bigger way during the team fights. Well, two items now done for Omut. And uh, Death Dance on the way for Kakao, so is going the aggressive route here on the Hecarim. Skipping his gemstone as well in his enchant, but it doesn't need it. Wants the big ticket items instead. Rift Child pop bottom lane that is going to be the tower forfeited over. But that will likely be a trade for mid out of here. Supermassive not too upset with how this is going. Tay will be very thankful for the gold, given how fed his lane opponent is. They had three members there and didn't even think twice that they should not dive the Shen. It was just out of the question entirely, and it's just so odd to see that when you have the Renekton, you're not going to be making those plays. It's a tough spot here. They need him to have boots because with the Cleaver build, you're looking at team fight. but how are you even going to find these flanks when so much of Supermassive's composition can actually kite you really effectively between the Lulu and the Senna? The Renekton finding an angle seems farther and farther from the truth. Yeah, especially with like Nautilus as well. It just feels like he's a whole team worth of peel as far as CC is for your squishier targets. Certainly the items are up uh, for INTZ if they want to fight for this dragon in 50 seconds or so. Two done for Envy, two done for Macau, and almost there for Tay. Might be there on time. He does have his TP if he does want to farm out for a little bit longer to be at maximum strength for the potential incoming fight. But super massive, just back out on the map. Gonna start, keep pushing, but Lulu has been in a side lane for a lot of this game since we've kind of broken out of the laning phase. Uh, Armwood, of course, is in a side lane constantly as this Shen, even though it's receiving more attention than he may like. And Zeitnot's been parked mid lane there with Snowflower and sometimes Kakao for a lot of this game as well. So it's been kind of a holding pattern for the last 10 minutes. But 10 seconds out of that dragon is up. Super massive already rushing down there. Yeah, it looked like INTZ just was nowhere near contesting this one. The Leona moving to the top side. Hopefully, we're thinking that they could take down the Shen there. But Envy, he's not strong enough to take him down. In fact, it doesn't seem like there's a combination of champions that INTZ have right now that can actually threaten a legitimate dive against his champion without at least trading one for one or him just getting a flash out of it. So they are really in a pickle here. Silas is a good match to the Shen because he can steal the ultimate and get out as well. But then you're faced with the problem of you don't have Silas in the fight to begin with. And then how are you looking to initiate? Because the Jin and the Leona are not strong either. So they are going to be the recipients of the Hecarim with the Lulu diving into them with the Senna and the Nautilus ultimate as well. So INTZ without the Renekton getting ahead is more and more it's it just so much harder for them now. You have a Renekton that fell behind. It, it, that's all you need to know about Renekton really. That's the champion in the nutshell. Yeah it feels like the time is certainly ticking. Four minutes or so until the Cloud Soul is up. Again, not a soul that every team always feels like they have to absolutely fight over, but Super Massive just happy to quietly play through the rest of this mid game and look for a pick off here. They feel like in the spot they're in, they know how to play this composition out. Kakao's going to be up to two like top laner worthy items, like very luxurious purchases for this Hecarim with the Triforce and the Death Dance. In fact, he may be done with Death Dance now as he is recalling. He even got the Skirmisher Saber there to make his fighting a little bit stronger. Normally you see the Talisman just stay 
without being upgraded, but here it's going to allow him to win more 1v1s than not, potentially looking at flanking a Renekton or even a Silas. That item will definitely make a big difference, but it's not like he's thinking about taking these fair fights. There's so many globals to help out the composition that is crafted around him. I kind of have to start looking at XP as well. Okay, um, what's going to be the first of level 16 by the looks of things? Kakao also level 14 from the jungle is two levels ahead of Shinny, and now Envy's getting chased down and wants nothing to do with his hacker and that just stole the enemy blue buff and is going to steal the Grump as well. Everywhere Hecarim goes, INTZ have to avoid him, but they're going to go on to Envy. He's in trouble. Yeah, that ult's not going to do enough, although maybe he's going to deny the die for a little bit longer here. GLP pop for Balulu and Envy just oh. about to get scooped up. There's a good stun though laid in onto Kakao. The wild growth gets popped. Onslaught of Shadows out for safety, but Macau pops in with a bullet and is able to take him down. But Armwood now going to look to take down Tay, flashing forward, but the flash is used by Tay as well to get a little no bit extra distance, but the chain is not quite there. The taunt, I think, just hit on the end of it, and Armwood just slaps him down with the scalpel. The flash from Baloo is going to avoid the chains from Envy. Snowflow also off to the wall to get out to safety. His Zeitnot's here to make sure his teammates are A-OK. -okay. Oh, they're thinking about re-engaging, but they're going to be fine. They're in the bot lane. Yes, the Renekton did stop the Shen, but he's already so darn fed. And if you don't have boots, you just can't get away from him. It was a heroic attempt there. They got the kill onto the Hecarim, but still, it's just a one for one for INTZ. All right, well, kind of the first major scrap we've had in a while. And kind of even across the board here, a super massive container to slowly grow their gold lead. But they're not exploding this game out of control. Uh, certainly, I think, more willing to let INTZ play into them. Or at least be waiting for those really primo angles with the Hecarim and the Shen before they start any sort of fight. And they do have some luxury here, although this dive was certainly a productive attempt by them. But Envy playing this very nicely, knowing reinforcements were on the way. Yeah, it's good for him to be clearing out the minion wave, but then this use of stopwatch was so unexpected, and then the Jin coming out of nowhere. The Hecarim does not have Merc Treads at this stage, so it's so easy for them to punish him with the crowd control and then the Nautilus going in. We didn't get to see the entire chase away, but we know that they all made it out alive, except the Renekton yep. in the box. <laughs> uh, what was able to take care of that? About 50 seconds out of that Cloud Soul was spawned. Super massive, also at this point, like, don't have to go for the Soul, as MV is going to hijack the Onslaught of Shadows off of Hecarim. Uh, Supermassive could potentially say, have your second dragon, take the Baron. Feels like the better price for Supermassive right now, given that they are trying to open up this game that much more with the lead that they currently have. You know, they've got a lead, but they haven't quite snowboarded it into something bigger and broken open the game, let's say. But Supermassive are determined to get some vision here in the river, but they are going to have to dip back mid and get some priority as Envy is starting to get slapped by this Senna. Not even three items on Zyton at all. Already doing pretty significant damage just with that poke. Both teams don't have a very good Baron comp, so while they could pivot away to it, they definitely need to kill a few members of the opposition if they want to go for that objective. Shen's already grouped here, not willing to risk his Shen ultimate being cancelled. He has most of the gold. He needs to be involved. The dragon is already up, but the engage is finding Lulu. Kakao also on the flank with a fight. It's going to stop Lulu. going to be the target. Here comes Kakao riding in. A great set ulti there for Zyno. He's going to make sure Tay falls and his teammates stay alive as Balulu is going to take down Redbird. Fighting front to back against this comp is so deadly. The Lulu was able to make it out alive and not a lot of damage on the side of INTZ was able to jump in there. Their TC was still held as a threat. If they committed, Hecarim could have always re-engaged and destroyed their backline. So they play it out calm and collected. They get a soul and now they can start thinking about going for the Baron and easily turn these fights that they will still have the Hecarim ultimate. Yeah, it just feels like a slow and steady grind here for Supermassive but they keep getting further ahead as we watch this one again. So they try to go in onto the Lulu, but the CC is immediate. They don't even get the stun onto her, and there wasn't going to be anybody that could follow through. If you think you can burst through Lulu, think again. There's a Shen ultimate, and then Senna heals to go through it. So she is certainly much harder to kill than you would think. And then no one can walk through the Shen, right? He's wild growth. He's just keeping everybody out of the fight. And uh, Kakao, even though his flank was late, actually kind of wasn't needed at the end of the day. Zion <laughs> TZ did the initiation for him. And 
Supermassive just cleaned up the soul. And the two kills there as well. Zeitnot must have so many souls now. He's got Runan's Hurricane. I'm going to go out on huh. Liam and say that's the first time I've ever seen that on center. Yeah. The... Me personally. Oh, Kakao's going to interrupt me because he's trying to kill Shinny. Chasing down Macau now instead. His Hecarim just will not be stopped. Envy with a decent counter ult that he stole from the Hecarim. But Armwood is godlike and well-deserved as Kakao's going to run back in onto Redbird. The bullet's there from the gin. Not enough to take down Zeitnot. And Balulu's going to scoop up the second kill. Oh, this game has gotten so out of control. Pastry, super massive. Doesn't even care about objectives anymore. They can just fight non-stop, and there's not much that INTC can do. They try to re-engage there. It was cute to steal the Hecram ultimate and go in, but Kakao actually kited out quite well and blocked the chains from the Lulu to make sure that he can keep his support alive. He was doing a fine job in being a utility for this team that already has all their carries and more. And now it's time for Baron. Super massive get their picks. And oh goodness, that's a snipe. Oh, with the jungler dead, it's just not even fair now. No, no, it's not. And I really wonder if that was a misclick to the RFC, because normally RFC is really, really good on Senna. Yes, it is. And when I saw the zeal, that's what I thought was coming out. They look the same, the red and yellow. So <laughs> you think like, okay, could maybe start with the same letter. You know what? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Again, certainly not something I've seen, but not oh. riding enough just yet. Kakao is just bullying the enemy team, though. Here comes Shen, but Macau's already been scooped off the rift. And now the rest will follow here as Redbird once again will be left at the mercy of the Hecarim as Shen gets kill number nine. Armut um, has been unstoppable right now on this Shen. A super massive gonna knock down mid lane and maybe more. They don't have to base, they can just end the game here. It's gonna be a pretty impressive bound power play at the end of it all. Supermassive just gonna indeed go for the kill. It's 2v5 right now. It's super massive. They're just gonna clean up the rest of these turrets. They have arrived to worlds in style. As Kakao take home alongside that Shen will take out INTZ, but not before Envy is left to his fountain in Zonya's. Getting bullied by the rest of Supermassive. Armored is legendary and rightly so. As Supermassive are gonna finish off the Nexus and pick up their first win of World 2020. Group A just got a whole lot more interesting pastry because Supermassive just gave us the most decisive win that we have seen out of this group thus far. And that is going to put the fear in Mad Lions and Team Liquid. Yep, just, uh, you know, we expected good things from this team and uh, that was certainly that. I think playing a comp that something very comfortable on, kind of uh, everyone in the roles you would expect. But uh, the game step played out Maybe even better than uh, Supermassive would have considered as Kakao's first gank to the top lane snowballed wildly out of control for that Shen. Yeah, the, the Shen is a pick that got a little bit of a nerf to the thing that he got his shield buffed and then the buff was reduced by half and suddenly teams were foregoing him as a pick, but clearly showing he's still got a ton of value. You have to remember the versatility that he showed when he was a top priority. It was jungle, it was top, it was even support. And now picking him back into the top and into these physical damage matchups, you pair him up so well with these dive comps and you still have a menace in the top lane that just transfers leads so well to the rest of the map. Yeah, I mean, just a really good look overall. I think Supermassive, a uh, great entrance into the tournament, certainly. Uh, maybe a couple of things that you don't want to give back away. Perhaps Kakao needs to lose Hacker, and perhaps Shen should never be let through a draft again for Armut. Uh, but I think, like we've seen, even with something like the Lulu, which was surprising, uh, there are a lot of strings to the bow that Supermassive have brought to Worlds. Yes, yeah, certainly. And it's cool to see that they're continuing to innovate, despite these not being the usual flavors that we see throughout the regular season. This is why you have to just think about playing your own game and not worry too much about what the enemy is thinking of because you don't know how far their bag of tricks goes. Well, we mentioned it already, but unsurprisingly, the oppo player of the game for this one is... You can guess it, Crumbs. In fact, I'm with Exactly. This Shen... I mean, what, he had 10 kills by the end of this game? He Legendary. was just everywhere. I mean, as soon as he got that first gank and dodged the 1v5 dive, this was his game to carry, and he certainly carried. Oh, it was so sick. This is the first play that just turned everything around. One rip oh, Herald this. move that was a disaster. And then the turnaround. He was already, I think, 4 or 5-0 and at this point. A casual 1v5. Really, Lulu wasn't necessary. He would have killed them all.
Yeah, and then this one again. He's like, hey, I'm getting out of here. And Tay's like, no, you're not. And Six, fine, you're going down with me if I'm not getting out. And Tay uh, perhaps regretted trapping Shen in there with him. He used his first dash in, but without boots on the Renekton. It's just so funny. You know, you, you're so slow. You're never getting away. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a real terror there for the Shen Amut. Despite playing tanks, certainly shows that you can carry on those styles of champions as well. But it is time for a quick break. But when we return, we'll look ahead towards Unicorns of Love. First game at Worlds 2020.